Giannina Sanini, please come to the podium. As a leading investigative journalist in Central America for almost two decades, Giannina Sanini has been both a fearless reporter and an innovator. She has taught investigative journalism at the Universidad de Costa Rica, San Jose, Costa Rica, and was until recently the editor of the investigative unit at La Nacion, Costa Rica's most influential newspaper. Sanini has earned many honors, including a 2005 special citation from the Cabot Prizes for her courageous investigative stories that unveiled corruption and bribery scandals leading to the arrest of two former Costa Rican presidents. Her work has also inspired a new generation of Latin American investigative reporters. Since 2000, she has trained hundreds of journalists on investigative journalism and computer-assisted reporting. Giannina Sanini, for your lifetime of commitment to explaining Latin America to your readers and your dedication to educating the next generation of journalists, the trustees of Columbia University are honored to present you with the Mariah Morris Cabot Gold Medal. Congratulations. Good night. I would like to offer my sincerest gratitude to President Bollinger, Dean Cole, and Maria Teresa Ronderos, Chair of the Board of Judges, for their efforts to support and empower investigative journalism and journalism in general in the Americas with this award. I accept this honor at a time when Latin America continues to face an invisible and not very sexy war to cover deep social polarization sprouting from and nurtured by the highest levels of inequality in the world. Latin America, the most unequal region of the planet, has 68 million people living in extreme poverty, but allows half a million of its individuals with a combined fortune of $7 trillion to avoid paying all their taxes. Although income inequality in Latin America has declined during the last decade, disparities are still overwhelming from any point of view. The richest 10% of households get an average 37% of the total per capita income, while the poorest 10% get only 1.5%. According to Oxfam, this year expected annual income for the 113 Latin American billionaires is equal to the public budget of El Salvador, Guatemala, and Nicaragua combined. When wealthy elites distribute political power among themselves and set the rules for them to comply, as they do in many countries in Latin America, democracy is weakened. With those levels of power, it's easy to raise the magic wand and legalize every act. Legal corruption, legal monopolies, and legal tax evasion. Tax havens and tax avoidance are legal but totally unfair. They place the burden on the shoulders of middle classes and poor people. I decided to bring up this challenge tonight to remind us of the importance of our profession as defenders of the public interest in the modern world. Gray areas like this one are affecting millions of people, but no auditor or prosecutor will dig into them because they are completely legal. Investigative journalism could play a determinant role uncovering with the use of data analysis the complex offshore networks where flows of untaxed capitals are legally hidden, thanks to the help of ingenious lawyers and accountants. This example also brings to mind all the colleagues and students I have worked with in the last 20 years, and who are not afraid of challenging power, even though many times they lack all the necessary support or the means. 
I treasure Milagros Espinosa's passion in Peru, investigating corruption in the fishing business, the determination and courage displayed by Paulina Quintao when facing government secrecy in Timor-Leste, and Cesar Batis' tenacity when digging into multi-million energy investments in Venezuela. Today, more than, ever be more than ever before, journalism needs more training, economic, and technological resources to meet the big challenges our weak democracies face. Let's start by working together and by developing teamwork with other disciplines in order to open those doors. Investigative journalism has never, just been, has never been just a profession to me, but rather my own salvation. During these two decades, it has always fit with my explorer nature, my fascination with the truth and individual freedom, and my deep rejection of injustice. Last but not least, I would like to state my deep appreciation and gratitude to the judges and to the Graduate School of Journalism at Columbia University for this honor. To Alejandro Urbina, who has been my editor at La Nación, to the newspaper La Nación, and to all my former co-workers there, especially Ernesto Rivera. I'm also deeply grateful with all my readers in Costa Rica where I worked as an investigative journalist for the last 20 years. If it weren't for them, I wouldn't be here tonight. I want to especially thank my, my parents and my amazing family who are here, and my three children, Carolina, Fiorella, and Santiago, who have been and will forever be my main source of motivation and inspiration. Buenas noches.